Koka sunarai sunarai enti 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 Hello, hi, welcome to this episode of the Mango TV podcast. Today we have two guests. Shanai Atalai is a business visionary, senior advisor, keynote speaker, conscious business designer, and leadership mentor. She's the founder of the regenerative success platform for women leaders called The Heroines, and is the co founder of Regenerate X, the learning and design agency which serves heart masters experiential events in Ibiza and around the world to co-create systems of peace. Shanai has long believed that consciousness is the door to freedom. In 2018, she developed 5D conscious business design and 5D values, methods for business and government leaders. Her background includes leading the world's leading design consultancy Fjord Design and Innovation by Accenture Interactive in Turkey and the Middle East. Her own fastest growing media technology startup in eight countries and working as an academician in global leadership and innovation. Rudy the Whale is the co founder of Regenerate X and Unconditional Men. He guides, connects, and inspires leaders and entrepreneurs to co create new paradigms of regenerative change. In his 40 plus years of experience working in innovation in different sectors, including music, media, marketing, technology, mobile, social, and holistic health, his vision for the future is that the deeper underlying systemic shift cannot happen any longer on the outside and need to happen from innovating within ourselves. Unconditional Man is a platform and a community of evolutionary men empowering the authentic transformation of leaders in service to the regeneration of our communities and the world. Regenerate X is an inspirational learning and design agency advising leaders to design conscious business model, create hybrid experience, and activate communities for regenerative futures. Their weekly newsletter reaches 17,000 plus professionals globally. And finally, Heart Masters will happen in Ibiza October 1st to 5th, 2022, and will be produced by Regenerative X. It's a five-day regenerative journey by an amazing group of experienced global community leaders where women, the heroines, and men, unconditional men, come together co-creating systems of peace after a three and a half day transformational journey. That sounds all amazing. Okay, so just quickly, welcome Shanai and Rudy. Good morning, Giancarlo. Hi. So today we're going to try a new format. You know, Mango TV has done roughly 30 podcasts, and this is the first one with more than one person. And uh, in particular, like we've created the subcategory psychedelic confessions, we are doing a new category called uh, couple secrets or couple confessions. <laughs> so uh, the first couple are Rudy and Shanai, and um, we're going to try to keep um, a 50-50 structure. You know, 50% uh, of the time, I'd love to go deeper into their practice and how um, they've created this incredible platform to, to help regeneration and conscious business and then the other half digging a little bit on their private life and let's see how <laughs> how deep they let me in <laughs> okay so why don't we do with ladies first and uh, we ask Shanai uh, a little bit to you know tell us their per personal story and uh, and in particular if you if there is one maybe sometimes it's more than one cathartic moment that really give you the 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 motivation to devote your life to helping other Thank you. It's really such a pleasure to be here. I love uh, your podcast and I love this opportunity. These topics are so relevant and important. What an amazing service. So thank you. Um, so I'm Janai and I was born and raised in Turkey, in Anatolia. And uh, I have my own uh, conditioning of what it means to be a woman, a leader. Uh, I have been a very hardworking, very mm, driven, but um, highly masculine uh, woman leader uh, in the business life. And my um, addiction to performance and to 
the old way of defining success has been um, conditioned me to live a life that wasn't mine. Uh, my benchmarks came from uh, the structures of my university, of my society, inspired by my mother, who is an amazing doctor. But she, uh, you know, it's her uh, and her life. I never really uh, allowed myself to discover who I am and what I want. Uh, so my uh, cathartic moment came uh, when I got married um, and then I was about to give birth to my first daughter and all of a sudden things started coming to surface that I'm not happy. I'm not happy in my marriage. I'm not happy in my life. And um, then I noticed it is best that I dedicate myself uh, to discovering who I am and what I really want. I have been a very successful uh, leader in Sorry, business. This was when I was uh, 30 years old. Years. So the first three decades of my life, uh, I was like an overachiever mm -hmm. and everybody thought I'm like super happy and successful, but it wasn't the case. I noticed that when I was looking at the mirror one day and I gave birth to my first daughter and I couldn't recognize the woman in the mirror, she had no light in her eyes and I'm a very joyous person. Yeah. I love life. So would you say that this marriage, this commitment was put you in the situation where you really had to face what it means to be happy? Yeah, uh, I was scared of deep connections because I wasn't connected to myself. So I manifested a marriage where my uh, ex-husband, father of my two children, uh, was an alcoholic. And so I lived a marriage without the other person and without me in it. So it was total shell. Uh, of course, I want to honor him and uh, our love for each other. But looking back, I noticed that wasn't even a true relationship. And I didn't know anything else but to open myself to discovering who I am. And because I'm very driven about serving to others, I wanted to find a method that can connect my personal journey, whereas I can also relate to business world and serve with it. And meanwhile, I gave birth to my second daughter. And I was like, okay, this is it. Uh, I need to find a way out. Everything was dark. So when I started searching for it, you know, when you start searching, the path appears. Um, I came across um, a friend suggested that I should meet Rudy on Facebook. I was married. He was married back then. And I, I applied for a divorce and he was going through a divorce process. So I wasn't interested in another relationship. Uh, but he invited me to join him to his journey in a method called Socratic Design. Uh, where uh, with a philosopher and physicist, we, we, we had the chance to look in deep into our life narratives, how the thoughts are coded, and how we can rewrite our own thinking by practicing simple methods like listening. Like that, that silence has so much wisdom, and when you are repeating yourself in a conditioned loop, uh, which I see a lot in humanity, in algorithms these days, um, then life wants you to be well. And uh, that is the opportunity for us to reimagine who we are, not just as Janai, not just as woman, but as humanity. This is our capacity and intelligence. Maybe take one minute to explain what the Socratic design is. Uh, Socratic design is when we look into our thoughts and start reflecting our stories, uh, it is very similar to writing journeys, journals like what is my life uh, from childhood until now. And you see the patterns of thoughts. For example, if you think yourself, oh, I'm, a, I'm an amazing achiever. So you create a lot of difficulties in your life just to feel that rush and adrenaline of achievement. Uh, or if you say life is unfair, you manifest a lot of unfairness in your life. doesn't matter if it's your business partners or intimate relationships. If you see the world is a dangerous place, you manifest a lot of accidents, a lot of danger. So that was like a true reflection, but we also uh, learned Socratic dialogue. Socratic dialogue is the art of listening, and you need to repeat what the other person said before you start speaking of your own mind which is 98% of the time is not an original idea, but your old self talking. 
It's like an imago technique. Have you heard about imago technique? No. It's a couple therapy tool where when, you know, it's a conflict resolution tool when you hear the other person and then you have to repeat what she said to make sure that you understood. <laughs> So in the Socratic dialogue, it's very similar, and we also use philosophy to find the patterns and the pathways of, of thinking and use philosophy and value systems to reimagine and recreate uh, systems for your life and business. But after I learned this method and went through this journey myself uh, together with Rudy, uh, I noticed, actually, I'm feeling a lot of beautiful uh, things. In my heart is there, but it was just masked and hurt. So I started opening up slowly. And Rudy has been my companion since then of rediscovering who I am and authentically start living my life, not only as, as a witness, but also as an amazing rock, a container that I can, um, you know, lean, lean in and... Um, dare to go forward. He reminds me who I am on my most difficult uh, moments. But I went back to Turkey and then I invited my ex-husband, the father of my children, whom we were going through a very difficult uh, divorce process. And he's a media media person. So we were always on the media with our story of shame and guilt and blame. And I said, I'm in peace. I made peace within me because I changed the codes that I'm thinking. I thought I had to win against him and the custody case we, we found ourselves in. But then I noticed he's the father of my child and there is no other way but peace and love for the sake of my daughters because they are half me and half him. It's biologically true, right? So everything is about making the connections. It's not spirituality. It's not just biology, philosophy. It's not just business economies. It's everything combined because we are the creators of all these methods to find our truth and to expand our consciousness. And uh, to cut it short, that was my moment of uh, catharsis that I lost myself. And in the process of finding myself, I found love in my heart. And then I invited my ex-husband to the Socratic dialogue, Socratic design. He rejected first, but then he was in for it because he was also in a lot of pain. And we invited also my daughters in the design process, and we figured out what it means to be an extended family. Rudy was always with us, and we designed a new rituals, a new lifestyle, what it means to have vacations when we are divorced together, all those things. And Honestly, I wasn't doing this to serve to humanity. I was doing it for myself and for my daughters. But then it turned out that we innovated the application of the most rigid family law in Turkey, which is a conservative country, um, that we became the first couple who got common custody in Turkey, which now affects more than 4 million lives. And it's the end of a huge war in a bleeding system, you know. And what I noticed in this process, uh, Giancarlo, when you focus on honestly on your own healing and really do the work in, you have no idea to what extent it can go. And mentally, you cannot strategize this. It's like you are the seed of so many forests and so many new life systems on this planet and beyond. So my biggest moment of the you know, like that I'm dead or am I alive, led to so it, the biggest service of my life in Turkey. But right now, why I'm so passionate about women, the women work, the heroines, it's not to save the world. It is not to conquer anybody. It's not about like oh, women are better than men. No, it is about work on yourself and integrate your beautiful self into all the systems of business and, and other systems that are socially affecting millions of life. And then from there, this is the service. This is what it means to be a heroine. And that's why I'm so passionate about peace. Amazing, amazing. I want to get into the heroine um, after, after Rudy's sharing. I just wanted to remind the listener that once again, in a moment of cries, that would allow the growth. You only grow through crisis. And, and you were lost, your marriage fell, fell down, you were lost, you felt, you felt a loss of meaning, and then out of that losing yourself, you were able to find yourself. And this is the eternal story, but you know, it's, it's worth to be reminded because especially nowadays, everybody goes through this crisis 
from every level, financial crisis, cultural crisis, spiritual crisis, and, and, and people think, oh my God, this is horrendous, but it is in that moment that there is the seeds for the transformation. So, Rudy, what about you? What is your personal story and your cathartic moment to devote your life to others? Yeah, I had a very uh, extraordinary life, I must say. I have always been doing what I wanted to do. You know, I imagined and then I, I just did it. So in my teenage years, I wanted to become a saxophone player. So I learned the saxophone, played with bands, you know, we toured Europe and Japan. And then that was in Belgium, right? That was in Belgium, yeah. And then um, I met my first wife. Uh, she got pregnant of triplet daughters. Yeah, so I got three daughters at the same time. So you're five altogether. Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Talk about divine feminine in your yes. house. <laughs> yeah, and one of my uh, daughters became a man also. So we have been, we can go later on that if you want. So very interesting processes of life, you know, as a father. So, but then, yeah, in that transition, I had this moment also that I had to switch basically from saxophone, which was not like making enough money for me at that time to going more into business. I was doing then also a lot of house parties. You know, I, I built the first house parties in Belgium with lots of DJs, artists, and always very creative. And, you uh, guys are such an Ibiza couple. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, and then I, I basically started with the internet also in 94, 95, very early on in Belgium. And then that project came to me, which was called Cyber Theater, which was an old movie theater that we redecorated and we made a whole cyber theater about it with 100 computers in it. We had already a 3D augmented reality room then in 1997. We had a you know, cyber cafe, we had restaurant, and then we did business events in the day. We did cultural events in the evening. So every evening there was like cultural events live broadcasted on the internet. So that was like the lap of my life later on, you know, I figured out. We did a lot of explorations there, innovations, we did a lot of experiments. And so that led to my career then later into on the internet where I worked a lot with startups, later on with mobile technology. And I became a very famous blogger at the time. So, and through that, then also I started traveling the world. Everybody started asking me to go and do talks. I became a public speaker, but I was always living like, okay, uh, in like a professional way of making money, providing for my, you know, family and all that. But I didn't have a real relationship with my wife also. That was a long time gone, you know, so. And um, so meanwhile, we moved to Barcelona also in that process. So in 90, early 2000, we moved to Barcelona. We lived 10 years in Barcelona. But in 2009, my uh, wife moved back with the children. So that for me was like the first wake up call like I one day I came back from a conference and the house was empty and I was like oh my god what is happening to my life you know but still I couldn't figure out what exactly it was I did some uh, psychology sessions then and all that but okay it was mainly focused on me like how do I deal with this but then again I okay went back into my professional life I hold on to my profession because that was what I knew best and I could you know, probably hide of my connection to self and my pain so and as uh, in that moment uh, I was very you know successful so I built another company and then I did more talks and I traveled the world more until I met my second wife which was living in the UK and then I moved to the UK and then after a couple of years in the UK the real cathartic moment happened. You know, I realized that everything I did at that time, which was always working in innovation or innovating on the outside, I realized I need to innovate on the inside. I was like in my early 50s, and for the first time, I looked back, you know, and then realized that I had trauma that I had never dealt with, you know, so. At that moment also, I met my philosopher friend again, who was living in Piralada in Barcelona, and who does the Socratic design. So he said, like, come and, you know, do a sabbatical, you know, just, you know, take time for yourself. This is the moment you really need time. And so there I learned, like, okay, looking back at my traumas, my belief systems, my addictions, my assumptions, you know, like everything that we are holding on from the old you know, conceptual world that we have been educated with. 
I realized it doesn't work any longer. So I have to reinvent myself. So hence, we started with Socratic Design. Then another Belgian friend, you know, introduced me on Facebook to Janai in that period. And she said, like, oh, I love what you are doing. Meanwhile, I started doing workshops with Socratic Design with my philosopher friend, and she came to Spain. And then I picked her up at the train station in Figueres, and that was like, you know, in her blue dress, and that was it. <laughs> so, <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah, we fell in love, and, and, and I think the second day or something, or we were driving around, and we were looking in each other's eyes, and it was like... We're on for a journey. That was the agreement. You know, we looked in each other's eyes and we know there's a soul connection here that is stronger than whatever our mind tells us. So, and from there on, we've been on a journey of like personal transformation. We did lots of things from Tony Robbins, Abraham Hicks, like all the transformational things that you can do. We probably did them. We did lots of workshops. Uh, we got in touch with plant-based medicine also. And then we went on this conscious journey. Yeah, so then I started doing, I was still doing talks, you know, uh, keynote talks, but then I brought in the consciousness element. You know, I talked about the age of consciousness to the technology companies and all that. But then COVID came, and then we also went through a serious transformation with, uh, uh, because we were also stuck, you know. She didn't have her daughters yet. We were in Ibiza, and... Um, she didn't have her daughter with her. With her, yeah, yeah. She, they were still in, in okay. Turkey, And um, so then in that process also a lot happened, I think, right? So For six months, I couldn't see my daughters. There was no flight to Istanbul, and I didn't have my residency yet. So I went through a very serious, painful process that was emotional, spiritual, but even physical. My livers were hurting, and I had to uncondition myself while I'm going through this pain, what it means to be a mother, Like what are what part of that pain really is mine? Because some of it was also the guilt that I was feeling because what others would say, you know, like you're a mother, how dare you can't be away? And it was so deep, Giancarlo. I totally lost myself in that process. But on the other side, I emerged as a more authentic human, a soul who knows what she wants and what she is up for. So. Right now, that that process that we also went through together with Rudy showed me that, like you're saying, the more the contract contraction, the bigger the opportunity. So hang on, hang in there, and keep on connecting to your beautiful heart, because that is a, a, an opportunity inviting you to evolve. No other experience can. So I'm so grateful to that process, but I also want to mention uh, that remembering that we are in this together when you have someone in the house because my connection to my daughters Rudy is not their biological father I couldn't find my how I could position myself next to Rudy while my daughters were away but it was also an opportunity for us to connect as a family like it doesn't matter biologically you are uh, it, it is they are his children or not he was there with us and he has been there for us Uh, all the time. So we re-emerged as a very strong family, and I'm so grateful. Amazing, amazing. But so, Rudy, since you mentioned, as you know, Mango TV listeners are familiar with plant medicine. Um, you mentioned plant medicine. To what extent, I think the the, the wake-up call, you call it, when you came back home in Barcelona and the, and the kids were gone and the family was gone, that was the beginning shock to the system that was the trigger to start looking inside To what when did plant medicine enter the process before after and how did it contribute no uh, after when i uh, when i lived with uh, jenna in turkey so um yeah to say the steps in the right order uh yeah when i realized when my first wife left with the children i was basically i was very i was living unconsciously you know like i was eating a lot drinking a lot at a certain moment i was weighing 104 kilo You know, so it was more a wake-up call, like, I need to change my life. But I wasn't ready. I still had to go to the process with my second wife in the UK to realize that, okay, that I really need to change myself. So, but only then when I met Janai, and then we decided to, I, I moved to Istanbul for three years. Everybody thought, like, here in Europe, like, Rudy, what are you doing? You know, you're going to Turkey with Erdogan and all that. 
And to be honest, I had the best time of my life. You know, Turkey is an amazing country, an amazing culture, and there's a, a, an amazing subculture, you know, that's very well connected. Uh, you can say it's underground. So in there, basically, we got our first uh, ayahuasca. Yeah, ayahuasca ceremony in Turkey. In Turkey yeah. Yeah. yeah, I did a lot of like, um, let's say, soft drugs or marijuana, hashis and LSD experiences when I was young. And then when I was working with, in clubs and all that, I also did cocaine and stuff like that. But, you know, and then the part when my children were born, I was basically off drugs. I was mainly using alcohol. So the part with the plant-based medicine is like, it's the step where you realize there is a higher intelligence. Yeah, so there is a higher intelligence and that wisdom of the plants is like, it's so intelligent, right? And it, it, it gives you all these messages of like, what is consciousness? What are you doing here? It's very humbling, right? It's very humbling, it's very strong, and it, 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 it basically, makes you humble about the human experience. I always say, like, for me, I realize that, you know, we have this, this experience of life through the human body. And we are so blessed to be able to live life through this experience. It's the most intelligent experience that one can have, you know, sensorial, visual, oral, and all that. Sense. So, and that is the beauty of life, you know, that's also the gift of life. And I think once we realize that life moves into a different direction or a dimension actually. And then we can create our own realities. You realize that you can create your own realities. So that's when we also decided to come to Ibiza because there was a one hour ceremony here and somebody told us to, you know, experience the real thing. So we came to Ibiza, have the ceremony. And then the next morning we said like, this is it. We're gonna move here. Right. Yeah, so that's five years ago. Yeah, four or five years ago. So that's how we arrived here. And then um, that's also that I started to do my work with unconditional men. So because every time I was talking to men, I had this feeling of like, you know, there is this missing link of like authenticity, you know, like what, what are we talking about? We're talking about work, we're talking about things, we're talking about products, exactly, yeah. Football, whatever. So, but what is it that you are truly about? So I got interested into that. And then with a couple of friends, we started meeting just at home every time in a different place. And I didn't know what was man's work. I didn't know anything, but we felt this is, this is good. We need this. There was a connection with man, you know, with other man and, and an honest, deep, authentic connection. Yeah. So, but yeah, yeah. let's, let's, let's stay on that. Then, yeah. then, then after we go to the heroin. So unconditional man, I think I was there at the Genesis, right? It was like a couple of years ago. It yes. Was before COVID or after? It was before COVID. You like, uh, I think we met one of those also with Louis and yeah. a couple of others. And, uh, yeah, then when COVID happened, I also started doing it online because I was very skeptical that we could do or transmit this type of authenticity through the screen. But I learned like the screen doesn't matter. When we show authenticity, yeah. it doesn't matter where there's a screen in between. So I also learned that this works online. So I saw, I started developing this project like, I can see this, like how we can build this, building circles, creating journeys, and it started developing in my mind as a project. Yeah, specifically for men. For men, yeah. yeah because you men. thought men were a little bit lost in translation of what it means to be a man. Totally lost in translation, yeah. And then meanwhile, Janai was doing already the heroin, so it, it, it kind of made sense. And then I met Sudhir, uh, only last summer actually, like in July last year, and then he had his experience of like 30 years working with men and his experience from uh, with Osho and training the trainers there. And so we, we immediately clicked and then we said, okay, let's start doing circles here in Ibiza. And then we started, I think last year in September, October, we did some circles and then we immediately built some programs like journeys. So journeys, we do six weeks journeys where we work on specific topics like courage, um, um, purpose, masculine feminine balance father and son relationships so but they are six weeks because we meet once a week yeah and then you get like exercises online like homework so it is a process and during the six weeks we are able to change small behaviors so we make the man conscious about their behavior sometimes they're there and they're the asshole and we need to tell them they're the asshole we don't tell them 
or through the experience, they realize like, oh my God, it's me. Yeah, so it's the focus again on this me. This, the transformation has to come from within. Yeah, it's never the other. It's always the person within the person itself. And so we build these programs. We did online programs. We did some journeys. I think we did four of them last year. And now we do our first retreats also. And Heart Masses is the first one we do, like, with Unconditioned Man and the heroines together. But we work separately for three and a half days. And then we will come together. And basically what happens is we bring the, the man or the people from the mind space to the heart and the body space. But let, let's stay a little bit on the men's circle. So people that are not used to this um, practice would say, okay, men's circle is a circle where everybody shares from the heart their concerns or vulnerability or problem, and but why not having the woman also? What would you say? Well, the thing is that men and women behave differently when they're in circles together. Yeah, so when men are together, we can create this sacred space of like we can share things that only men can hold yeah and also there is a we have some guidelines that whatever happens in the circle stays in the circle it's not shared and then when you would put women the men would start you know acting, acting differently also when you put where you would put men into a women's circle they would act differently about around vulnerability issue yeah, and be able to be authentic yeah. yeah so and what we do is like if you put 10 men together in a circle for five minutes without guidance they will start fighting Mm. Yeah, why? Because they all have an opinion. Every man has an opinion, whether it's left, right, up, down, whatever, it doesn't matter. They start confronting each other, yeah? And it's because I want to be right, it's ego play. So the first thing we do is we don't talk about opinion. We don't talk with the mind. We talk about, we are interested in what is your experience. What do you feel when you read this news that makes you angry like that? Yeah, yeah let's not comment on the news. Let's comment on your, re your reaction to exactly, the news. Exactly, exactly. So that immediately creates a space of like, oh, I haven't been here before. And then because every man has a different story, you know, and you always think like your own story is the worst. Um, but then you hear stories of people who have been going through so much worse things than yourself. So it's a very humbling experience also. And that creates uh, unity, it creates confidence, it creates trust. Solidarity. Yeah, yeah. solidarity. So, and that's what we're working on also. So or it's on a very deep level. Yeah. And, and it's that connection that men are missing. You know, I don't know if you know, but most men have a problematic relationship with their father. Most of them, nearly 90% if you go into statistics, of which 30% have a very hateful relationship and other 30%, they see each other, but they are very like, you know, cynical and distant with each other. And then another 30%, they just see the father for family, you know, duty. So, and, and, and that's the world we live in. That's the world we live in where most men deal with issues or trauma that has not been dealt with. And then through that life you know it took me i was in my early 50s when i looked back at myself and like oh my god i have so much trauma i haven't dealt with and then you have to go through it and then you need the courage you need other examples or role models to help you through that stage because it's probably also the most difficult stage of your life yeah? so that's why you need other men to go through that and whether you're 20 years old or 30 or 50 it doesn't matter we have any age group Everybody has their own stories of what is my authentic self, what is my truth, and how can I connect to men who have the same truth and authenticity. And that's why our project is so attractive to other men because they feel they feel the call. Yeah. So this is this is so important. And if you allow me, I just want to mention Gabor Mate says that he doesn't need introduction on this podcast. He says that. Uh, every man and woman, but specifically with men, they have two basic needs. A need of authenticity, because evolutionary to survive in the savannah from the saber to, to, to tiger, you need to be authentic. And then attachment, you, you know, you have a, this attachment towards your mother at the beginning, but then towards, towards your father as a role model. And sometimes, like in 90% of the case, fathers make mistakes, lose interest, are distracted, they don't show up to the, to the school recital. And the kid, age four, five, six, seven, interpret the father's absence not as the father was busy, but he doesn't love me. 
And so they internalize a sense of unworthiness that might stay there forever. Because that sense of unworthiness then recreate a secondary trauma, a constellation of trauma. And so they put themselves in situation that is familial, that reinforce this sense of being unworthy. So they will date the toxic woman, they will end up in the, in, 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 in a you know, self-destructive situation. And so your work is really important to give this container where men can say, yes, I started doing that because I lost my authenticity because I wanted to get my father attachment back. And that creates all this trauma that pollutes your life. So yeah. There is a, a beautiful theory about it. I think it's in uh, the book of uh, No More Mr. Nice Guy. I don't know if you have read that. I forgot the author now for a moment. But um, So basically, he says that through the Industrial Revolution, men were taken away from the home. Yeah, Before, boys were always surrounded by other men on the land, You know, by their cousins, their adults, their father and grandfather and all that. So with the Industrial Revolution, the men went away. So the boys at home lost their role model. When the father came home, he was too tired to play with the kid. So that's like the first step. Then the women also started working out. Yeah? And basically what is happening in the business world, it's a very masculine energy. It's hard masculine energy, as we say. You know, It's very competitive. It's all about efficiency. You need to be arrogant. You need to be like standing your ground, all these things like hard masculinity. So the women then also took that type of energy, but still took care of the children. Yeah? So again, the boys didn't have the father role that is there to hold the space. Yeah? And so now we're in this, I think, second or third generation of men already who are very feminine because they have been raised by feminine energy mostly and have been lacking this masculine energy. And then women also took over a lot of masculine energy which is the hard masculine energy or the toxic masculinity. This is why couples have such a difficult time to actually come together because they're not in their right energy. So this is also the work we do with hard masters is about what is masculine energy? What is your healthy, good, strong masculine energy? And what is the feminine energy? So, and this is what uh, she does with heroines, what I do with unconditioned men. And that's how we come together to really go back to our core energy levels. Amazing, amazing work. Okay, it's time for the heroines now. <laughs> so tell us, how did your personal story that you shared then um, give you the incentive to, to then create the heroines? What is it about? How does it work? The heroines is um, a community, a platform where I specifically focus on designing conscious business models for the emerging new world together with women while they are uh, harmonizing their feminine and masculine energy, but show up with courage that to birth the, this new world. And in the process of birthing, uh, my two births have been very impactful on me. They were both natural births, but one of them took uh, 27 hours. I was almost dead, and my daughter was al almost dead. And I, I made the mistake of pushing too hard for too many hours. And that is like the summary of my also business life. Push too much, try to overachieve, try to compete with men who have the advantage. And otherwise, you, will, you won't succeed. And what is not succeeding is not just about some ego thing. We need to make money. We need to vote. We need to be heard so that we have an influence in the systems that are being designed. And as a conscious business model designer, I can see all the codes when we are looking at the education, the food, the media. They are all based on the success metrics of designed business models that are unconscious. Because we thought extracting from nature uh, high-speed growth and profit-oriented or mechanisms that didn't care about the well-being of humans who are part of the system is a smart business. It is not. We are killing ourselves. We are killing each other. We are killing the planet. That's why um, I thought during COVID and I felt who I can go on a mission, on a journey, who can understand it, who are open to it because I don't have all the energy to convince people. I'm so <laughs> way beyond, beyond it now. And who would dare to take action? And I thought 
women who have the capacity to give birth, regardless of their cho uh, choice to do so, are ready. During COVID, most of the leaders that I was talking to didn't know what to do. But guess what? Most of the women were ready to walk towards that darkness nobody knew. It's our capacity of birthing, and we have an advantage that we, through our menstruation, we are very connected to moon cycles, mm -hmm. to nature. We are intuitive, and we have these capacities, that intelligence. Why not to use it? It is time. So I invited women that I know who are already successful in business to come together and to design conscious business models and to prototype new success metrics for the new emerging world. And that community grew now. We are almost 100 women around the world. And what I now know is that I started as like, let's uh, claim our power. But now I know it's not just about the power. It's about the responsibility that feminine energy needs to be integrated. And women need to take their part in their being. We are and we are women, and we don't need to do a lot of things to compete with others. When we are in our presence of this beautiful feminine energy, harmonized and uh, supported with the masculine energy, then we also allow men to do things more consciously. But without women's um, womb, we are the womb of humanity. If we can hold space for men, then together... We can totally change everything in one night. I, I am a strong believer that uh, the, the, the shift in the consciousness will result in changing anything and everything. We are limitless and nature supports us because the well-being is our uh, state of being. In the heroines, uh, we take annual journeys. We call them heroines journey. You know, we are very accustomed in the Hollywood scripts. You you are very knowledgeable about it to the hero's journey. Uh, and the heroine's journey starts where the hero's journey ends. This personal victory is not any more sufficient to, to humanity than the heroine of the story. And she takes a journey uh, of embracing her feminine self, which is the mother, which is the nature. And then only then uh, we start taking... Um, understanding that we are one with nature, the great mother, and the heroine's journey has the elements of being a community instead of a solo hero slaying the dragons, and the heroine's journey all also has the um, archetypes where there are weak ones uh, that are invited to the community and it becomes a, a whole container for everyone. And um, for example, the Dorothy's story, uh, in the Wizard of Oz is a perfect example of a heroine's journey. And in these annual journeys, we design conscious business models, we prototype them, we design new ways of communication. But for me, the participants, the women, are my real focus, our transformation, ending the sexism within us, and taking our power with new feminine energy is what I am working with, with these uh, participants. Amazing, amazing. I'm blown away. This is so well said and powerful and empowering let's i would just spend let's go back a little bit for people to understand because okay let's remind our listener what is the hero's journey so joseph campbell uh, the mythologist what is a hero journey and maybe just repeat how and in which way the herring journey start when the hero journey ends the hero's journey uh, starts with the seeking that uh, the hero understands this as his life doesn't work for him anymore. Like in Rudy's story, my story, there was a dead end, right? It's not for us anymore. And the hero needs to take an adventure where he goes through very difficult, dangerous uh, times where he faces his weakness, his own mortality, and then appears in his life, the sage, the guides, the protectors, and he then understands that he is the hero, he claims his power, he slays the dragons and save the day. This is the hero's journey. When the hero's journey ends, that community and that wisdom, the heroine's journey starts. Because the now this is also with COVID, we understood. We were heroes, right? We developed the technology. We had the business. We had unlimited um, opportunities ahead of us. There is nothing we cannot do as humanity is what we understood. And this is like the last couple of years consciousness. But something was missing. And this is where the heroine's journey starts. We understand 
we were separated from our feminine energy. We didn't respect the feminine, the divine mother, the nature. And when we disconnected from that part of us, which is life, it didn't satisfy us. There doesn't need to be a danger outside. We created by separating ourselves from nature in so many ways. And the heroine's journey is a total different attitude. The journey is a community journey. The journey is about being whole humans and also humbly accepting that you are nature. This magnificent power is only available to you and visible to you when you humble yourself. And this psyche, this this uh, silo thinking of humanity is, I see, is ending. There is a new era. There is a new world where the new humanity is rising, understanding we are nature. We are, we are the, part of nature. We're not the boss of nature. We cannot be the boss of nature because we are nature. So the, when you start saying, I'm the boss or I'm the slave, there is a separation. And this is what we do in the heroine's journey. I have uh, innovated a method called 5D values. For example, Giancarlo, we can say, oh, I care about nature, right? Like there are a lot of protests, there are a lot of beautiful conversations, books written, research happening. And now nature is our focus because our survival depends on her now, like how we understand her and how we uh, harmonize ourselves and our systems with her. But then when I am uh, inviting leaders to design businesses starting with their values, I noticed many leaders still to this date are starting from a very victim level. If I ask, what is nature to you? They start saying, oh, nature is very important because otherwise we are not going to leave. And they start blaming other people. It's because of them, these oil companies, this is happening. And there's a lot of anger and shame and guilt and like catastrophe in the people think when I say nature, when I think of nature, if I get into this mode of blaming others, you are already creating a lot of separation. That is not natural. That is not harmonious. So I invite them, okay, let's move to the second level. Convince me why I should care about nature. And this is where the leaders start having empathy to the others. If you talk to the boss of an oil company, you need to get in his shoes and understand he's a part of a bigger machine. And in order for him to change that big machine, you need he needs to do a lot of things. And instead of blaming them, how we can invite them for action that is also relatable to him and that is advantageous to him. So then you need to start talking with business metrics that how conscious business can be also a smart business. So it shifts and it start, you start creating a relationship with the person that you normally blame. But that is also a very masculine energy that's convincing. It's a very entrepreneur uh, energy that we see with lean innovation and all those pitch your, pitch your startup. But we, are, we need to move even beyond that. And that is the third level where I, I might add the leader to start seeing the abundance of the value that they seek for. And this is a channeler consciousness where you are in the gratitude energy. And I say, can you tell me the abundance of nature? We are lucky we are in Ibiza. But anywhere, people start seeing the, the particles, the, the, the energy of nature being available even in each breath. So it relaxes the mind and you drop in your heart and you start uh, harmonizing with that energy that you were once seeking for. And on the fourth level, we come to the I am consciousness. And I invite you to say, I am my value. I am nature. And Giancarlo, when you say, I am nature, your voice changes, your heart expands, and then you start becoming that value that once you were seeking for. And actually, as humans, if we understand our capacity, when we become what we want, then there is no separation. And from that energy, from that level, if we start designing our business models, our communication strategies, our relationships, our technologies, then that's a total different story. But we need to be that to do that. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful. Okay, guys, so um, uh, you then will join forces, the Unconditional Men and the Heroines, on October 1st to 5th here in Ibiza for the Heart Masters Conference where you're going to explore... Um, all this methodology you described to create systems of peace. 
people, I strong. If you if you like what you heard, I recommend. Do you still have some spots available? We have a couple of spots available. Yes. So, so where where people can uh, subscribe and find more? Heartmasters.com. Regeneratex.co. The regeneratex.co. Okay, guys. Now, if you allow me, I wanted to be a little cheeky because because you know mango tv is an evolving platform but mostly it, you know the themes explored are based or rather my curiosity started with the documentary from mangusta production and one documentary was called monogamish on consensual non-monogamy we have another feature called uh, estado impuro also about non-monogamy we're now licensing um, sex to spirit about sacred sexuality. Um, so this topic of non-monogamy, poly- polyamory, sacred sexuality is uh, a topic that we would like to explore. Um, I recently did an ISTA level one in August, which I cannot recommend enough. Um, for me, it was um, like, have you heard about the Hoffman process? It's the it's a week uh, group psychoanalytical program in uh, in California and New York, um, and anyway, it's it's very well respected, very expensive, and I feel that ISTA level one, it's a better off man. <laughs> 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 um, it's it's uh, it's 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 all about you know identify your blind spot and your pain bodies, and there's a lot of tools to deal with that, um, and there is this topic of sacred sexuality, which is really, you know, catching my interest. I feel that um, nowadays, you know, people think that the sexual revolution has has brought so much freedom and so much joy, but it's not really true. You know, all these statistics, I follow an English podcaster called Chris Williamson. He goes, he went very deep in studying the state of affair of sexuality among, you know, Gen X and and millennial and and it's not a good look. Apparently, one third of men under thirty have not had sex for the last year. There is all this incels group in 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 volu- involuntary celibacy that is growing up everywhere. Women are more and more um, objectifying their bodies. There there is the only fun is incredible phenomenon where all these young girls want to be, you know, be paid to be naked. So where am I going with that? So basically I would like to explore to the extent that you feel comfortable, of course, what is your approach with sexual sexuality, non-monogamy in that, you know, more um, more intimate container and um, yes, I'm curious to see how you guys, uh, you came together in such a powerful way. You felt, okay, you are the one I was waiting for. Now, seven years later, are you still keeping this power and this enthusiasm? How do you, what are your tricks and secret to keep the energy, the enthusiasm? How do you keep your triggers at bay? Do you have code work? We want the secret of your longevity. <laughs> Who wants to go first? <laughs> Rudy. I think, um, you know, first, yeah, to pick on all, everything you said there, I think we live in these concepts and belief systems that we need to be individualistic, perform, be compete and all that, which leaves people with like, oh, there's no other life. If I hear many people and I'm, I'm in lots of these men's group, I hear all these discussions and I see this. There's this new trend of men just, they don't want any, they sometimes they are married, but they don't want any sexual life any longer. They just purely focus on competition, being efficient, and I want to make it, you know, and that. But so so, so what, for these people, sex is just a waste of time? Yeah, they say it like they, they say, I don't want to waste my time. Well, yeah. But so let's repeat why do we think sexuality is yeah. important, maybe. So, so, but, <laughs> no, but that's it. So, you know, at, at one point, you need to realize that there's an entire other life on the other side of that belief system that is so anchored within, you know, and it's full of addiction, like porn addiction and consumer addiction and whatever type of addictions, alcoholism and all that. So, um, and mental health issues also derive from that. So it's really important that, you know, Men take the step also to like connect to themselves and like, because if a man is not connected to himself, how can he give love to another woman? Mm. That's the first step. 
if I'm just in or I'm just meeting women to perform and to, you know, this is, I was in that period for a whole, you know, maybe two decades of my life also. I was traveling the world, meeting a lot of women, and even if I was monogamous with my wife and all that, but in between I had periods when I was like, you know, dating a lot, but just like to perform also. And then you think that, okay, that makes you feel good just for a moment, you know. It makes you just believe or it just makes you leave your pain or not having to think about your pain. But it's really about when a man is connecting to his authentic self that he can give real love to a woman. And I think this is what happened to us, you know. When we met, we could see each other's beauty and heart and like what is I could see that woman is like wow what is in that woman she's so powerful and all that and 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 but also she had that femininity I could see that she was very masculine you know like she was very also still in that world of performing and in okay. Turkey as a woman you have to stand your way because the, the it's a very macho culture so but then I could also see that you know femininity of like and this is what we lack in the world the femininity that we see on social media is not femininity. You know, it's not the real femininity. It's not the real femininity that is open. It's an illusion, yeah. That is welcoming the man with all his, you know, faults and mistakes and whatever his situation he's in. Women are here to hold masculinity, to hold the man and give him strength again to say, like, it's okay. You know, we can do this together. And this is what is lacking. But I think only when we are in this mode and we through our relationship we have been going through you know like i think all the different steps that one can go in in very uh, fast rhythm you know we go very fast we're very fast learners and we like to experiment also so we we try a lot of new things and and for me also there has been at some point we opened up for example and for me it was a whole process that i had never lived as a man because i was always the one taking other women yeah or going with other women but then Janai showed me that also when she decides to open up and I had to go through everything that a man can feel like jealousy and, you know, what is this happening? You know, wow. so yeah, there, yeah, was, yeah. there was this decision of opening up. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. Yeah. So wh- how long ago was that? A couple of years ago, I think, yeah, for probably the second year in Ibiza. You know, Ibiza is like when you arrive, you know, and then you get all the excitement and all the parties, and then we were totally open up. And I was, in principle, I was okay with it. I was very open. I was okay with it. We talked about it. But then I didn't know how my subconscious would react. And then all this, you know negative emotions came up within me and I had to deal with that. That was a whole process just for me, like, you know, and then I would say thank you, Janai, for showing me that because I had never lived that as a man. I had never ever been jealous as a man in my life. So that was also, I think, for me, a cathartic moment of like going through processes. But that's also another thing. I see a lot of people doing meditation, holistic health and all that, but they're sitting 10 years on top of the mountain, but then when you come into a relationship, you still need to go to integrate integrate all that wisdom because it's pure projection, right? And I think with Janai, I'm blessed that she's showing me all the beauty that life is, you know, all the challenges at the same time, but the challenges also come because we have the belief system that we need to suffer. We are suffering because we're in a belief system system of blame and shame and, and guilt from the Catholic, you know, in Europe it's mainly Catholic or Protestant or whatever religion you are. But that is our subconscious. That is our training, right? So if you want to break through that, you really need to break through that. So you need to live it also through the suffering to break through that. But uh, I believe that we have been suffering enough. We don't need to suffer. There is another life also possible. Wow, you guys are so brave. I didn't know you went through this process. But so, and if you don't mind me asking, how is it going for you now, this opening situation? Do you... <laughs> then then we go to her, just to finish. We are, I think we are open because we are just... Uh, but it's like, don't ask, don't tell, or you share everything? We share, we share everything, basically. And like this summer, before the summer, we had a, like a... A difficult couple of months because we were not connected to each other. We were focused on work and getting things done and then uh, co-parenting and all the things. And, and then we, during the summer, we had some 
couple of days alone again. And it was really beautiful because we could reconnect basically to each other. Because we are very deeply connected, our souls are connected and we are, you know, we love each other. Where there's love, I think as a man, you need to be first understand gratitude, you know, gratitude for life, you know, what it is, what it is that we are here for. You need to be able to be compassionate, to be, you know, like also know the beauty of um, appreciation you know, and self-love, you know, you need to love yourself if, if to love the other. If you don't love yourself, you cannot create love with somebody else. So that's basically bottom line. Yeah. So as long as you are not there, you need to work to get there, I would say. Well, I'm impressed. You guys are such a cool modern couple. You know, at, at Easter, they always talk about um, this idea of, um, you know, to what extent not only desire is acceptable, but also how desire is maybe healing and how pleasure is healing and how all these men that repress their lust for other women outside the couple, you know, it, it, it seeds, you know, it's, it's like, it's like, it's like resistance. It's like shadows that build up, uh, but it's very difficult in our culture with the Judeo Christian morality for, you know, to, to, to go, you know, to open up. I feel that many people won't, but nobody can really do it <laughs> successfully. Yeah, because that desire is also an addiction. Okay. It's not yeah. it's not a truthful desire from the heart, it's a desire from the mind. Okay. But so how do you how you how do you find how do you do the distinction? It's when you connect through your heart basically that you know that, you know, what you desire is something different because the mind is always dividing the heart is always inviting right. yeah so and and it's i i think because men are locked into that belief system and these codes and they need to break through because they're constantly blocked of things they have a desire to break through something but it's that's not the real desire of the heart it's the desire of the mind yeah so that's why we have so many addictions and, and they are just like fast, fast, fast type of, um, you know, dopamine uh, injections while we need serotonin type of injections, which are more like the long term. What is it that I see? What is my vision for the long term? How do I behave? What is my commitment to myself? What is my willpower to go to where I want to go instead of just looking at I need this now, I need that now, I need this now, I need that now. Yeah, which is the society we live in. But so, Rudy, forgive me. And, you know, again, if I'm stepping, if I, you know, stepping some boundaries, you can tell me. Um, how do you deal with the feeling of the other person? I mean, how do you position? You know, so you guys are allowed to have, um, you know, other other affair outside the couple. Uh, I mean, do you, they're, all, they're once only, or, can, or are you allowed to have a secondary partner? We are basically open, you know, so, but it hasn't happened it recently. Happen. It hasn't happened because we are very much in love with each other and we respect each other. And also we know, I think it's important if you're in a relationship that you know the sensitivities of the other person, because when there's trauma, there is hurt. So either you process that together, but yeah, you don't want to add oil on the fire. You know, if you, because you live in a conscious relationship, you, you care about the other, not just yourself. When we're in personal desire, it's I care for myself. It's my desire. I don't care about the other. And love is about, you know, making things happen with others, right? Interesting. So maybe nothing really is happening. It's just having permission that allow to not feel the pressure. But exactly. then you don't need to act on the permission. Exactly. It's interesting. And how was for you the opening process? And how are you living being an open couple? <laughs> So I think to give a bit of background, um, I'm I'm a Turkish woman coming from an Islamic uh, culture, and uh, Rudy is Belgium. Uh, he's very open to many things. Uh, he's 20 years older than me. Uh, we have five kids, and we don't have kids together actually biologically. We are different cultures, different uh, belief systems. So our union is very extraordinary. Uh, which I love, you know, we 
we are integrating, harmonizing not just ourselves and what couples can be like uh, or what partners, we are also business partners, uh, can can be together, but also how different religions, cultures, generations harmonize. So I now know the responsibility of it. So it is not individual. And I don't agree with the word uh, permission. I can say consent. Blessing. Consent, which is consent is very important because this is a relationship and a relationship is a, like a child. You need to nurture, care and see the growth, but not over control. But um, permission is like, first, do you give yourself the consent to be who you are? I, 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 couldn't, um, I couldn't really navigate pleasure. And I'm 41 years old. I'm still learning. I'm just learning. I'm in the beginning. And Rudy has been my portal towards that. Like without shame and guilt, can I be me? Without body shaming, without feeling sinful because I'm enjoying it too much. So I'm a lear learner. And I didn't know how to be in a relationship. Remember my story? Yes. So I'm, I'm learning how to be in a relationship. So what I know is business and design and innovation. So what we have been doing with Rudy is that, okay, what are the principles to a good innovation? You know, you, you change worlds. And there are a couple of principles. Communication is so important. And communication, I don't mean this is what I want and just like deal with it. It's like listening understanding not just understanding mentally but also um, sometimes others others can say things in order to please you but you can't you can't tell me Jenna, it's okay but is it really you can sense as a woman in so many details whether your man is there or not and I skipped some of those processes I didn't do it right I, I but I, I learned from it so this is the innovation of relationships so don't, uh, my suggestion is that don't jump into things that are so unknown and that are mentally okay, but how your body reacts and we are spiritual beings. You are carrying your ancestors. It's not just two people, three people in the bed. It's whole, whole community. But we need to be very sensitive about these things. There are after effects. And in our relationship, now I have my daughters, like, they are my daughters and we are living in the same house. It is not just Rudy and Janai anymore. And also you are living in a community. There is a culture. Ibiza is like super free and independent, but I totally would uh, invite people to consider the cultural um, values and respect them uh, within, their within their culture. So there is no yes or no or dark or white or right or wrong. There is nothing like that. It is a navigation system, and it is a human innovation, cultural innovation. It's a relationship in innovation. I would recommend the communication part is so important, which we are doing fantastic now. But especially to women, you know, I want to say respect your yourself. Respect yourself. Your Our bodies are temples. This womb is giving birth to new humans, to new worlds, to new opportunities. We are holding the space. So women respecting themselves is a total different story. It's a new dimension. And this is what also we are doing with the heroines. And also respect your men. Like just because there is a mistake, there is also like something wrong, okay, in the relationship. Also for men to respect women, let's don't disrespect each other. Like you might be hurt, focus on your hurt, deal with it. And if you want to be in a relationship with that person, respect that person. And even if you are separated, respect that person. I hear so many people talking about each other in, in their friendship groups. Don't do that. Respect your man even when he's not there. Because when you respect your man or all your relationships, it is a sign of self-respect. And this is the nucleus of all creation. You cannot piss there and expect a healthy relationship out of it. And that respect doesn't need to be even verbalized or expressed. When you are thinking of your partner, if, you, if it's not blissful, amazing, respectful ideas, you need to change the way you are thinking. I'm not saying stick to a relationship that doesn't work for you. But I'm saying be your best. Because intimate relationships are amazing opportunities to see who you are and what you need. 
If you keep on changing the mirror or put a hundred mirrors in one room to see yourself and keep on moving them, it is chaos. It is chaos for me. Maybe there are people who can organize it better, but I am very good with one partner right now. And I don't expect it to change right now because I love seeing my truth in the mirror of pure love of Rudy. I'm so lucky and I'm so grateful. And our experience has been also a reminder of how I can respect him more, myself more, and how we can innovate our relationship with the principles that apply not just to relationship, but any domain of life and business. And the other thing I would like to add is pleasure is not just bounded with sex. Pleasure is everywhere. It can be also in the office, in your business, even when you are preparing a report. But you know there is the Sufi love that is in the heart and that is connected to all life and the creators. And when you are in that type of love, that bliss, that pleasure, that burning heart is available not just to your body, but you can have a total orgasm in your mind, in your spirit, in your everyday life. We can fall in love and we can have orgasms on all levels mm -hmm. without seeking the superficial um, uh, way that the media is exposing now with, you know, to our also children. We need, to, we need to allow ourselves to receive pleasure of divine love without seeking anything outside of us, but go creating beautiful relationships because this is how we exist. Beautiful. Yeah, be be beautifully said. And uh, if you're talking about growth, um, you know, the couple is, is the ideal container because it's a constant sounding board with, with the triggers, right? You know, living together in, a, in an environment and working together and parenting together there's moment of disagreement that sometimes go deeper than just the event. You know, it's just a trigger from childhood. And, and the, the other person reaction is a signal. So it's like, um, like a relationship, a committed relationship is like a constant couple therapy. We use, my wife and I, we constantly use each other for therapy. I see her reaction to my words. And when I see that, she gets triggered. I, you know, there is, we always need to break it down. And so why did you feel this way? Why do you feel this way? So it's, um, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's really a, a container for growth. Mm -hmm. that, that, um, and we feel that, you know, as much as it's tempting, this idea of having some freedom outside the couple, because it is very tempting, right now we feel that, you know, we're still... Okay, let me say that there is a, um, a, a mathematical metaphor that my friend told me, which is, of course, it's not true. It's just a metaphor. It says that if you want a couple which is 100% whole, you need two people that are 100% whole. Anything less than 100 would accentuate the gap. So if you're 100, 100, you can have 100. But if you're 90, 90, already is 81 <laughs> gap. If you're 77, you know, 77... Uh, you are um, uh, 49. If you're 6'6", six, six, you're 36. So the the gap in not being whole in each one accent to the, the cumulative gap. So it's just a metaphor, but I feel there's some truth to it. And we feel that, um, you know, for opening up, you really need to have all your chakras in, in sync. So, you know, you need, you need to have a complete uh, connection and then, and then, and then, under certain circumstances, it's possible. You know, I have, we have a lot of um, non-monogamous friends that are very happy. That also uses, you know, if you do this practice of non-monogamy, also from the heart with respect, authenticity, and communication, that it's even more a tool for growth, because the sexual domain, the sexual sphere, accentuate the insecurities, the pain body, the demons. That's what a little bit they do at, the, at Easter in those temple nights. They say that, you know, the, 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 the eros, the erotic environment make, <coughs> make um, Easter use this, this tradition of calling the pain body, the shadows, the demon, they call them buffalo, which is in the tradition of Castaneda. I can't remember the name. And so 
they say that you know Ista in a way it's it's a course to help you hunting the buffalo you know to deal with your pain bodies and they say you know the buffalo they're not always visible and when they are you really need to be precise but also loving and patient mm -hmm. and they say that basically the erotic realm the sexuality realm acts make the buffalo more visible for you to hunt them And and it's true. I you know it's true. It's definitely true. It's it's a very delicate, and very personal, mm -hmm. but uh, it is true. And in in the movie Monogamy, you can see that monogamy. It's a very recent concept. You know, like in the history of humankind, men and women were never monogamous, or rather, the men imposed monogamy to the woman because they want to make sure that the child was theirs for the inheritance for the estate, and then with the sexual revolution of the sixties. You know, woman imposed the same restriction to men. So since then, now you know, reciprocal monogamy is a 50 years old experiment. It's very recent. Mm -hmm. It's not working because 60 percent of marriages end up in divorce, and it's not even natural. You know, Christopher Ryan mm -hmm. in Sex at Dawn spent years studying all the species, and they say there's not one single species who's monogamous. People says ah, the Na the Napoleon penguin are monogamous. You remember that movie, March of the Penguin? You know, religious congregation would would rent space to show how monogamous the penguin were, but they were pe they were monogamous for one year. Yeah, but what about elephants? The elephants are not monogamous. Uh -huh. Even the swan, they mate for life, but they have the sex outside the couple. So in monogamy, we ask the question: What is it of of a construct that is not working? Is very recent. And it's not natural, but yet we take it as a default system, and we beat ourselves down if we're not good at it. And the answer is, you know, the Judeo-Christian Judeo morality and the government that, you know, is banking on on the couple for the, all the advantage to create a, fam a nuclear family that can take care of themselves outside of the government. You know, there's this lawyer in the in the movie that talks about that, Diana Adams. Um, okay, guys, we've been together already an hour and 15 minutes. In terms of practical advice, you know, you mentioned respect, communication. Do you guys have a, like um, a schedule, like every Monday we write, we meet or something like that? Yes, yes because it's so confusing when you do business together, co-parent, live in a country where you don't have your family to support you. And there's so many things to do. So what we uh, started doing with Rudy first, uh, we have annual programs where we uh, spend time together as a family, but we also have our separate uh, vacations. Nice. So space is very important, Rudy having his own time, me having my own time. Is so How many important. weeks per year to be? So this year it has been all, like four weeks already, I think, when we were in different countries, correct? Around four weeks? Yeah, something like that, yeah. Also, uh, weekly we have a date night. Mm. Uh, it's not just important for us, but also my daughters to grow up seeing this is a relationship. This is how man and woman can exist. Uh, and they, they understand there is parenting, but there is also a an, an romantic relationship. So I believe it's like so important for children to witness such um, decisions. Uh, also, So date night happens outside the house? Yes, yes. And not with the kids, of course. Of course, one, one, every, one, once a week. Once a week. Uh, also, uh, we have our own rooms. We sleep together, but there are times that we sleep alone. For me, it is very important that I can be in my own energy and I can rest myself, and not just mentally, physically, but also spiritually. And he likes also having his own space. So it's an energetic uh, respect that we are providing for each other. Also, the most important thing actually we are doing to strengthen our relationship and to be resilient in, in, in times of stress, uh, this, you cannot just act when things happen. You need to prepare yourself a healthy soil. And for us, that is um, eating well, not, not drinking you know, things that are bad to our bodies, Uh, we do a lot of exercise sports. We started like really committed this summer. And uh, we do what is good for our health and well-being. And if you are good, then you can do anything. But if you're not good, you can tell me all the reasons why we should be monogamous or not. It's just mental. 
your body needs to be ready for it. So that is the container we are providing for each other. I'm working a lot on myself to end my inner sexism that I used to be angry with men. So I do a lot of internal work to be in peace with my man and to respect him and to hold space for him. Also, uh, we do a lot of gratitude exercises. Uh, every day we wake up, we meditate, and we have uh, an ever-evolving script of making commitments, putting our intentions, and uh, some things that we repeat to just seal the day, you know, like start the day together. It's so powerful. Amazing, amazing. Rudy, tell us a little bit. Yeah, I think as a man, uh, for myself, morning routine is very important. You know, that time for yourself where you connect to yourself. So, you know, I do the, I go out in nature first or I run or I walk with the dogs and I do my yoga, my meditation, and I set my intentions. I think living with intention and manifestation is very important. Intention yeah. and manifestation. Yeah, also that we, uh, we always dream together. Where do we want to go next? Like, for example, before the summer, we had the idea, okay, we're in Ibiza, this amazing space, place. Uh, we're going to do our retreats here because everybody wants to come here. This is amazing. But then during the summer, we progressed and actually, oh, but this concept can go anywhere. So why not go to Bali? Why not go to Mexico, Costa Rica, wherever we are invited? Yeah, we can go and we can travel the world around. And even our children, we broke through a... Uh, let's say, a blockage, which was like, in Europe, you need to stay with the children because they need to go to school. But what about if you can break through that, that you can take them with you, and while well, they can be schooled on the way, on the road, because they meet so many amazing people who are masters themselves in like, what is it, how we can raise our children differently? Because I think also, as long as we don't apply what we learn ourselves or what we have learned, to our children, nothing is going to change because they are the next generation. So if we put them in the same system that I was part of, like I was raised 50 years ago. You can expect different results. Exactly. So and we are now also, I think, ready to, you know, break through that, you know, blockage. And that's going to be our next, you know, like conscious challenge that we put for ourselves, you know, like to keep life exciting because we always move forward. We always go somewhere else. We always move forward and break through something that keeps it also exciting. So I think, but yeah, stay connected to yourself, be grounded, be centered is very important for a man to hold space to, you know, your woman and then your children and then also, you know, your community and to build on those a stronghold principles of like, yeah, build an, a new type of community where men can heal, women can heal, and we can move together into a new direction that is unknown as of now. Because a lot of people are scared of that, like, you know, I know yeah, some men, they tell me like, Rudy, I'm not going to go there, what you do? It's, it scares me, you know, because there's no role models yet. It's too early. So we need a lot. We need to build the role models ourselves. Amazing. How old are your daughters that you live with? 10 and 11. 10 and 11, yeah. Um, one thing I would like to add to what Rudy is saying, I think more and more, Giancarlo, we are noticing our place, not just in our relationship as Janaya and Rudy, but also within our families and within our communities. I think there is a lot of thirst and hunger for people to understand that relationships can be healthy, that they can be free, they can be growing, and they can be also in service to humanity. And for us now, um, we are becoming also grandparents. In a couple of weeks, Rudy's daughter is giving birth. And I see myself now, you know, I'm a daughter, I'm a mother, now I'm becoming a grandmother. So what is my heritage, you know, like just not just for me, but also for my daughters and for people around us. What is the story we are writing with our intelligence, with our willpower as humanity that is more advanced than any other animal and any other species on earth? Like we have that responsibility of putting the intention of we can be in relationships that are free, liberating, growing, and in service to humanity. And from there... I invite everybody to do their own design. There is no right or wrong. There is only innovation from the heart. But always on the solid pillar of respect and communication. 
I couldn't figure out another way yet. <laughs> Let me put it this way. <laughs> okay, guys, that was amazing. You are really an example, um, both individual and as, as a couple. Um, yeah, someone else, I can't remember, told me that the, the secret of a happy relationship is to have three journeys. You know, my journey, your journey, and a journey together. And having this balance of energy, you know, sometimes someone gives too much energy to the other person's journey, not enough to do their own. Uh, some, you know, my wife really find her purpose and her calling only a few years ago. She's been preparing for that all her life, studying yoga, meditation, and, and then the Gabor Mate Compassion Inquiry, and then the Jim Fadiman microdosing protocol. And, 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 and now it came together here in Ibiza, and I can see how our relationship is really went to the next level. Because now she has her own journey, she has her own space, she has her own career, and uh, and it's the, the relationship the, 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 is much more balanced than when than when we were we were in New York. Yeah, I think it's yeah. Personal journey is important, but you need to dream together. You need yes. to have that dream together. And right. people, journey together. people are not dreaming enough. You know, we also always uh, help people or ask people like, "What do you dream?" Where do you want to be in one year, in three years, in five years? What do you dream? There's so much self-limitation. Exactly. And then mostly when we look back, we always are or even beyond what we dreamt like a couple of years ago. So keep dreaming, I would say. And I really like um, to see you shining and Stephanie shining. Uh, you know, by just looking at a person, you can understand whether they are in a healthy relationship, supporting each other living their own truth or not. So the relationships are the core to any design, any innovation we want to bring to life. So let's pay that respect and bring that importance to relationships. Thank you. Thank you for saying that. Also, we were saying when we entered this little recording studio here, which is very intimate, you know, it's all black. <laughs> Shanae rem reminded me that we did the Embodied Spirituality Workshop together. <laughs> <laughs> with, with, uh, with Jorge Ferrer, which has been uh, our guest twice on the podcast. I recommend checking his work. And uh, and we were, it was like this conscious touch, this intimate moment together. And now we are repeating it here, even if more intellectually. Yeah, I, I wanted to thank you also, Giancarlo, for all your work you're doing, you know, in this new realm and, you know, psychedelics and plant-based medicine and all this research and all this production you do like by giving this community a voice yeah because we need examples this community needs examples a lot of people need examples so i would like to thank you and also wishing you all the best and strength for your future endeavors you know we are thank you it's very rare that uh, courage comes together with professionalism but also with the joy that you carry and emit to all of us it's also uh, such a chance to be together in this beautiful island with thank such you. gifts thank you thank you okay so um in terms of i want to put on the show notes you know some uh, website to um to find you guys um maybe maybe we're just gonna put it on the show notes we need to repeat everything i will have um, my fantastic uh, production assistant to put uh, all of them, the heroine, the unconditional man, the regenerator X, and the hearts master. Heart master. And yeah. we are on LinkedIn and Instagram. Just we love connecting to people who are also on a mission. Yes, yeah. yes. Reach out to them. They're a very inspir inspiring couple. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Peace. Thank you. Giancarlo. Thank you. Peace. Poca sunara y sunara y en ti. Coca 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 sunara y sunara y en ti.